The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. My name is Mike Broderick, and I have been a resident of Nashua for 28 years. The Right to Know Public Access Show is aimed at providing knowledge of current events, policies, and the decision-making process that affects the lives of the citizens of Nashua. My mission is to help citizens understand city politics so that they may improve their lives in the city where they live. I wish to inform, educate, and enlighten the citizens of Nashua because they have the right to know. Our show tonight, a second a two-part show, our second part of the show will be Alderman Moriarty and Commissioner Tracy Pappas. Right now, I'd like to introduce Mr. Ed Lacious, uh, who is, your, your resume is tremendous, and there's no word really to describe what you've done for the city, but tonight we're going to talk about the stroll. Well, Michael, a pleasure to be here and uh, catch up with you again. Uh, I'm just doing what my father told me to do, which is if you were going to live here and be successful, you've got to be willing to give something back, and that's what I've tried to do and what I've tried to live by. And I cannot believe that we are at uh, the 20th holiday stroll. I was going to ask you how long it's been, 20 years. This is huh? the 20th, and, you know, uh, a funny thing happened on the way to Alliance Pancake Breakfast. A uh, gentleman who was employed by the city by the name of Alan Minoyan uh, actually saw the poster at City Hall for the breakfast and uh, contacted me because I was listed as one of the contacts and said, do you know uh, how to I get a hold of your Santa Claus? And we started a conversation. And uh, the first stroll, a couple thousand people were here. It was kind of put together very quickly, a couple of weeks. And uh, there were no set plans. There were a few entertainments, a few shops open. And uh, they got to Library Hill. They lit the tree. Everybody disappeared. And <laughs> Santa was left standing there. <laughs> so you didn't or, get to deliver your presents. Didn't huh? have to deliver presents. <laughs> Santa stood there from uh, 6 p.m. till about 10.15 and talk to all the children. And then as time has gone on, it got fine-tuned. Uh, the committee has expanded. And it is a great partnership between the Great American Downtown, of which Marilozo was one of the founders. Uh, and now she's on the other side as our, the partner uh, with us uh, as, as mayor of the city. And it's the city of Nashua uh, with the Great American Downtown and volunteers, businesses uh, who put this on, it has become the number one event, uh, not only in New Hampshire, but in Nashua, Nashua being the number one city. That's right. Well, there were 30,000 people. Do you expect the same amount of people this year? We expect more. More, more really. Uh, we expect more. And uh, being the, uh, the 20th, we have a couple of new uh, twists to it. Uh, there'll, there'll be a new look to the downtown with the new light poles and uh, the new sidewalks. Uh, there'll be a couple of other things that I'm not going to, to mention, okay. see if folks <laughs> notice them. Uh, Santa traditionally has arrived in an antique fire engine. Uh, this year he's going to be coming in in an antique truck. No uh, reindeer. Huh? No reindeer. reindeer. They're resting up for, the big, for the big trip. Day. Okay. Uh, two of our prominent business families in Nashua, uh, the Bellavances, Bellavance mm -hmm. Beverage, yes. and the Laws from uh, La Motor Freight are uh, providing us with their antique trucks. One will be carrying Santa and uh, the uh, period-dressed uh, uh, couple that have traditionally led the parade the last few years, the stroll. And uh, in the second truck, the mayor will be there, along with Miss New Hampshire, Samantha Russo from Nashua, uh, Miss Gate City, and Miss Sohegan Valley. So we've added a little uh, there, and uh, Miss New Hampshire, Samantha Russo, will be singing following the tree lighting. She'll sing a couple of songs. But uh, the stroll will be led by our own Nashua Spartans, Drum and Bugle Corps. Very good. They will lead. There's a baton twirling group that will follow them. 
and uh, we'll start the traditional uh, stroll up Main Street from uh, City Hall and uh, stop at Library Hill Thursday the 14th, the uh, official city tree from the Elliott family, South Main, just off of South Main Street, uh, has been put in place thanks to the efforts of uh, Park Recreation. And, and it's a community yes. event and it's a partnership with the city and GAD. Uh, we, we couldn't do it without the, the city's support. And, you know, it goes back, Mayor Wagner, Mayor Davidson, Mayor Streeter, now Mayor Lozo. Uh, Department of Public Works is great. Uh, part of this effort, uh, Nashville Transit, Mark Sousa, yes. uh, Tom Gallagarni from Economic Development. Tom does a lot of stuff behind the scenes that people don't even uh, realize. Uh, police, fire department are involved, uh, AMR, ambulance, uh, they're involved yeah. with us. Uh, Justin Cates, the emergency management director, and now his, some of his folks who have been trained as CERT team members, uh, Citizens Emergency Response Team, they're going to be assisting and they'll be designated by a uh, their, uh, their vest, and they're going to be helping out all around the downtown area, in addition to the, the police. Uh, and our staff, Great American Downtown, uh, couldn't do it without Rebecca and Allie. Uh, it's a two-person office, but, you know, they, they just do great things. Uh, and if it wasn't for the uh, trustees of the Hunt Building, uh, Santa wouldn't have a place to uh, meet the children. Since that It'll first be a event, warmer, probably, and it's so. a little nicer inside, <laughs> yes. And uh, they will have Santa's room uh, all appropriately decorated, and uh, it, you know it's going to be great. And there's a couple of new venues this year. Uh, as a result of the 20th, the Arena Sports Bar is going to have entertainment there beginning at 5:45, and uh, so that they're new uh, to it this year. If you keep bringing and in more businesses and. Uh, Commercial, it's really a safe event, too, a nice thing for it families is, to come in. It is, it's a family event. Right. And, and we're asking, too, because it is a family event, uh, we're asking the pet owners, especially the dog owners, to please leave your pet at home. Yes. Uh, last year, there were a couple of incidents where uh, larger dogs uh, went after smaller ones, or heaven forbid that they go after a child. So we're asking, in the interest of keeping it a safe family event, that uh, pet owners leave their pets home. It's not good for their pet. Uh, the noise, the excitement, the, uh, the, the flashing lights from some of the uh, displays, the bands that are performing on the live stage, uh, that those, those tend to intimidate right. and frighten yeah. the animals. So please yeah. leave them home good to know. and have a good time uh, by everybody. Uh, another new venue this year, the St. Pat's Center on Main Street uh, and, and St. Pat's Church. Uh, is going to be having something. Nice. And as people await the procession, if you're down in the uh, Railroad Square area, in the area of the Hunt Building, yes. you're going to hear a familiar sound. The chimes ah. have been uh, repaired, and Beautiful. Will, they'll be chiming appropriate seasonal yeah. music uh, uh, until the uh, Spartans arrive with Santa and the, uh, the special guests. Yeah, small children are going to love that. They probably haven't heard them before, so yeah, it would be yeah. really nice, you know. And you mentioned the entertainment. Now, where is the entertainment going to be located? The entertainment's going to be all over the downtown, Michael, and, I, and, and so I'm not missing anything. I'm going to use my little cheat sheet here. <laughs> uh, Triangle Credit Union at 110 Main Street uh, are the sponsors of the stage there, and the entertainment there starts at 545. The first group will be Friday after 5. Uh, they're a funk rock uh, metal band. And at 710, Ryan Brooks Kelly, a contemporary country artist, will be performing. Which one are you singing? Uh, well, I'm, that's <laughs> going to be a surprise. And then uh, at 835, Sitting Ducks, which is a blues rock band, will perform. Very nice. Uh, 30 Temple Street, uh, the big building up the top of Temple Street. Yes. Uh, the Bishop Girton First Robotics Team uh, will be putting on demonstrations up there. Uh, 80 Main Street, the Floods, which is a folk rock group, will be performing all evening at that venue. 86 West Pearl Street at 710, uh, the Sugar Pills, which is a garage band, uh, hmm. will be performing. Uh, as I said, Arena, the sports bar at 53 High Street, new to us this year. Uh, at 545, the Bedford Big Band, a 20-piece jazz and swing band, will be performing. And then at seven, at eight thirty-five, the Diamond Edge Rock and Eighties Pop Band will be performing. Oh. At uh, Ancient Moon at ninety-five West Pearl Street, 
uh, starting at 545, Acoustic Breezes will be performing. And then uh, Abishan Hardware will have uh, Naughty or Nice starting at 545, and that's an acoustic folk band. Beckonings outside will have uh, a singer-songwriter with pop, rock, and folk music, Sarah Noyovitz. And at Bicentennial Park, a very popular uh, attraction that we've had for several years now, the New Hampshire uh, Astronomical Society will be there for stargazing and a telescope demonstration. So hopefully it'll be a clear yeah. night. We just uh, for that. I can't say where we're going to get my grandson for Christmas, but he will oh, probably take him over there. Nice. <laughs> at the Church of the Good Shepherd, uh, the the world famous Good Shepherd bell ringers will be performing at 5:45. And then there'll be another uh, folk fusion acoustic band at 710. And a uh, bluegrass band, the Deep Hole Road, will perform there at 835. Uh, at City Hall, as has been the case uh, for almost all 20 of these, we have uh, the ice breakers, ice carvings. Yes. And this year's theme is going to be uh, the Polar Express. Oh. And... Uh, there's also going to be an uh, interactive ice carving that if it all comes to pass and the weather cooperates, uh, folks will be able to kind of look through and get their pictures, take pictures with Beautiful. it. So, so that's always a, a popular thing. Uh, in the uh, rotunda, the Rhythm of New Hampshire show chorus uh, will be performing at 545. And then it will uh, be a uh, profile chorus performing from 710 till 945. The Court Street Theater, the Peacock Players, will be up first. The Northern Ballet Theater will follow them. And the Y Dance and Motion Group will follow them. At the top of Library Hill, and by the way, Main Street will be closed from Library Hill to West Hollow Street, okay. beginning at 3 p.m. Okay, I was going to ask you that. Good. Uh, the First Church, the Granite Statements Barbershop Group, uh, will be uh, kicking off at 545. The New England Voices in Harmony will follow them, and it'll wrap up with Jazz First, which is a jazz trio with Pamela Smith as a vocalist. At Fodies on Clinton Street, the Transistors, which is a 60 rock group, will lead things off. Magafuna, a dance group, will follow, and Flatliners Blues, the blues rock band, will end the night. Uh, in front of Fresh at 178 Main Street, the Gate City Squad, which is a hip-hop band, will perform uh, from 5.45 till a little after 8. Gentle Dental, there will be a contemporary jazz blues ensemble. And then uh, Minor Seconds, another jazz-themed holiday tune group, will perform to close the evening. Grace Fellowship Church will have the Main Street Band and Saving Grace Dance Ensemble. And they will go till about 7.15, and that will be followed till closing by the Compact Big Band, which is uh, mm -hmm. very popular in this area. Of course, the Hunt Building, right after the tree lighting, uh, Santa will be holding court from uh, uh, the end of the tree lighting till about 8.15. At the Main Street United Methodist Church, their choir will perform uh, at 5.45 till 6.45. They'll be followed by the Merrimack Valley Flute Choir, and Cow Hampshire Folk Music will conclude the program there. At Icabera Flowers, uh, George Parker, uh, who performed Japanese Koto all evening for, for them. And let's see, Martha's Exchange Upstairs, uh, Homes for the Holiday, a Gingerbread House contest will be displayed in the upstairs of Martha's. And, of course, weather permitting, they'll be out on the sidewalk al along with yep. several of the other downtown right. venues. I was going to ask you about that also. <laughs> uh, the Nashua Bank front steps will have the North Main Music Guitar Army playing popular music there. At the Public Library, this is another great place to be uh, on Court Street, the Steve Blunt will be doing seasonal songs for kids and families at 545, followed by educational entertainment uh, by Mark Booty, who is a illusionist. Oh. So that should be fun. Yes. Uh, in the children's room, 
Uh, Make It Labs, which is a science group, will be doing some 3D printing of ornaments that folks will be able to take advantage of. In the uh, music art wing, the media wing at the library, the Harmonica Saints, a folk Christmas song group, will perform at 545, and that will be followed at uh, 710 by the Fiddling Thompsons, which is a, a folk group. And in the theater area at the library, Stephanie Beach Magic, a holiday stage magic show, will start things. And then a ukulele band will, uh, will follow that. At the uh, NBT Bank, a new location and a new uh, group with us this year, DJ Jack Lees will be providing holiday music. NBT is at 221 Main Street. Up on Temple Street at Old Amsterdam Bar and Lounge, they'll have Potsy, which is a hard rock group, leading off. That'll be followed by the Joni Earthquake Band. And uh, Bell Wire will close things out for them. At the Santander Bank parking lot, back for the second year, we will have our annual uh, rail jam, thanks to the folks at Zimmerman Ski Boards and more. It's a ski and snowboard competition. And they'll have two rails, uh, jumps that will be built that day. Uh, Thanks to the Conway Arena and Public Works, we'll be trucking over some ice shavings to put the snow in and uh, it was a huge success last year, and we're, we're very happy uh, to have Zimmerman's back with us. That's probably for with people us. under 50, I would say. That's for everybody. <laughs> Even you could go, Michael. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> At Papanusik Mills, the Queen City Soul Group will be performing all evening. At the St. Patrick's Church, uh, a new venue this year, uh, we will have the St. Patrick's Organist and Choir performing uh, songs for the holiday. Down on uh, West Pearl Street at Susie's Salon, Just Harry, a solo rockability doo-wop group, will be performing. TD Bank, 191 Main Street, the Dan Searle Group, which is a jazz uh, funk and fusion group. The Tiger's Den at 238 Main will be a martial arts demonstration. The studio will be open. The Unitarian Universalist Church in Lowell Street In the uh, sanctuary area, the New Englanders, a country folk bluegrass group, will start things off. And Nightshot, a rock group, will close it out from 8.35 till quarter 10. And in their auditorium, they'll have uh, dramatic arts, upstage dramatic arts, which are skits and creative motivational uh, program with audience participation. And then the Granite State uh, Conjurers, Stage Magic, will follow. And then uh, we'll wrap up with the Stagecoach Women's Chorus. And our last venue uh, will be other demonstrations, performances uh, around the downtown. Uh, A new one this year, we're going to have a lumberjack demonstration. And they will be doing the cutting of logs, and uh, that will be interesting. Tokyo Joe's will have a uh, Panther demo by their team. Make It Labs will also be located down on Main and Park Street with some other demonstrations for uh, uh, science-related things, uh, the Nashville Karate Club and the Zumba Club of New Hampshire wow. will be there. So staff something really for everybody. Your staff, <coughs> yeah, it'd be hard to choose where to go. No, well, point. we got a great committee, a yeah. uh, number of volunteers that have been meeting uh, once a month up until the end of October, and now every month, uh, every Thursday morning we meet and go over things, and, and it's all come together. Uh, we've got a beautiful uh, billboard out on uh, the Everett Turnpike, thanks to the folks at Sunnyside Acura. Uh, and again, city agencies behind the scenes, out Everyone. front. Uh, we have the trucks that are going to do the, uh, the procession. The, uh, the crowds will have lit- lighted candles this year. Those will be passed out. Uh, we ran into a little hiccup with the printing of the programs, but we want to thank uh, Greg Pohl and the folks at the Telegraph. They stepped up nice. and uh, came to the rescue. And actually, it's, it's actually going to be better because the program is going to be a little bigger than they normally are because of the uh, printing the, uh, press that they're going right. to use. But they stepped in at the 11th hour. So and, and they'll have great. this information uh, on the streets. Is that where they can get gathers where everything's going on? There's going to be a couple good? of information booths okay. uh, downtown. And you can go to the Great American Downtown website or the Go Nashville website. In. And the other thing, there's going to be a couple of kiosks in the downtown area and on the Go Nashville site, 
thanks to uh, Angelo and Pam Andruskevich in the GIS department and the assessor's office at City Hall. There's going to be an interactive map. So you can pull that map up and you can go to a site. You go to, say, Martha's. Yes. And you touch it and you can open up a window and it'll tell you what's there and what time it's, it's taking place. Wow. So again, we, we're moving along and uh, we, we thank them. And of course, once the procession gets to Library Hill, uh, there'll be a little ceremony uh, thanking the sponsors, the groups uh, performing, the volunteers, and the Mayor Loza will speak, and then the Mayor and Santa will do a countdown with everybody. Uh, and the Mayor will actually have a switch to throw from the staging nice. uh, to ensure that those lights go on <laughs> uh, when we, when we get down great. there. And right after that, uh, Samantha Russo, our uh, Miss New Hampshire from Nashua, will sing a couple of tunes, Santa Claus is Coming to Town and Oh Holy Night, and if you have not heard Sam sing, uh, you're in for a treat. Great. In fact, she won uh, an award at the Miss America pageant in the talent competition. She is a very talented young woman, and uh, we're very happy to, uh, to have her. And uh, after that, while uh, Santa gets ready to go into the castle and folks get ready to uh, stroll, uh, before they leave, the Spartans will play a couple of uh, Christmas tunes, and then they'll uh, go to their staging area and, and, and head off. And, well, uh, it goes till 10 o'clock at night. It's going to be a great evening. Yes, it is. I just want to ask you about the spirit of giving. Yes, there are going to be a number of volunteer groups that will be set up uh, in the City Hall, across from City Hall area. And uh, there, are, uh, there, there are some that will be uh, uh, selling items to, to, to assist uh, their cause, and others will be looking for donations. Uh, I know one group will be looking to collect hats, mittens, gloves, and, and what have you. And uh, those will all be listed. There will be a story coming out of next week's Telegraph on the downtown page people with, the, with the specifics of that. And mm -hmm. people are encouraged to do what they can. Uh, and the stores. The stores are excited. Yes. We have over 20 of the downtown businesses that are going to be taking part in a window decorating contest. Yes. And there's going to be a little red Santa's hat that will be located in, I think, seven or eight or nine of the stores. And if you fill up and tell us where it is, you go into a drawing and there'll be a gift basket with gift cards from a number of the downtown merchants. Uh, I believe they said the value would be several hundred dollars. Oh, very nice. So the stores <laughs> really are getting into that. And even. some of them have started already right. uh, preparing. And, uh, of course, this is just to show off our great downtown that we Beautiful. have here in Nashua. And, uh, you should be commended for everything you do. Uh, well, it, it's, over 20 actually, years, you know. it, it's um, actually I been just, exciting to be involved yes. for 20 years. And, and this year, uh, you know, they gave me the honor of being the chairman. So I get a little more involved in the nuts and bolts of it. And it, it truly is amazing. Well, you don't have how, any more gray here. Yeah, how, 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 how a group of people <laughs> who get together mm -hmm. just for this event. Yep. They come from all walks of life. There are homemakers. There are uh, business leaders. Uh, city officials, and it just kind of all comes together. Uh, that Saturday, the 30th, uh, the, one of the challenges this year, no more meters. And we used to bag the meters, letting folks know they have to be right. out of there by 3 o'clock. But there's free parking in downtown that day, and uh, there will be signs put up. Uh, we would appreciate it if folks uh, have their cars off of Main Street by 3 p.m. so that uh, the street will be then closed down, and uh, we, we need to get the, the food vendors need to be set up so they can be inspected by the health right. department. And we have to do other logistical things right. to prepare it for the stroll. And uh, I'm anticipating uh, uh, perhaps the largest crowd ever. Beautiful. Well, before we go, I just on a separate note, I just want to mention something about Santa in the park. And I know that um, you have a lot to do with that. And uh, Mrs. Imelda Murphy decorates the gazebo. Could you just tell us a quickly a little bit about that? That is going to be on uh, Sunday, December the 8th, from, I believe, 12 to 2. Okay. And again, just. Mrs. Murphy and her family and a number of the North End residents, they came up with this idea for parents who can't afford to go and have a, a picture taken at the malls because of the expense. Right. Their kid would never have an opportunity to have their picture taken. Uh, they worked with uh, Tom DeWayne and Nick yeah. Caggiano at Park Rec. And again, the city stepping sure. in, being a partner, collaborating. And uh, it's been great. Yeah. Uh, the kids get to have a picture with Santa. 
And between all of those involved, they all leave with a gift, yeah. something. And it really, uh, it really is interesting. Between the stroll, uh, and I know that Santa does kind of an unscientific poll as to uh, where folks are from. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them are coming from the uh, Amherst, Milford, Peterborough, uh, Manchester, Concord, yeah. uh, Exeter, Epping, Derry, Londonderry, yeah. Lowell, Kingsboro, Dunstable, and uh, I know he was telling me that there has been one child that for the last eight or nine years has been here from St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Wow, that's be Obviously incredible. down visiting nice family for the, the holiday. Nice thing for the city to do and uh, Mrs. And, uh, Murphy and Santa. And, and this other, yeah, this, yeah. Uh, this thing at the Greeley Park yeah. is a great thing. And right. uh, again, a okay, couple Mr. of people coming together. Absolutely. With an idea and giving carrying back. the ball and, and giving, giving back. back. Giving yeah. back. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time, Mr. Lacious, and yeah. I appreciate you coming coming here this evening. It's my honor to have you here this evening, and I want to thank you for your time. I know you're a busy man. We'll be right yeah. back. No with busier that. than you have, right? <laughs> I don't know about that, but we'll be right back with uh, Alderman Moriarty and Commissioner Tracy Pappas. Thank you, Ed. Thank you. Welcome back. I would like to introduce my two guests. Uh, first of all, Alderman Dim Moriarty and Commissioner Tracy Pappas. Thank you for coming this evening, and I appreciate your time. Thank you um, for having me. Thank you. Um, Alderman Moriarty, what was it like, uh, what, what issues were you faced with when you decided to go from a ward alderman to an alderman at large? What were your concerns? Well, I had a lot of ground to make up on name recognition citywide. Mm -hmm. I was fairly confident that I would get a decent amount of the voters of people who watch Channel 16 and the people who read the Telegraph regularly, the city politics section inside Nashua. But that's only a thousand people on Channel 16 and a number on the Telegraph. And I knew there were going to be 8,000 people turning out. So I had a lot of ground to make up. And you visited a lot of wards to, to make that happen. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I campaigned in every ward. And uh, we walked pretty close to every street in Nashua and rang the doorbell of uh, close to every voter who showed up. So your triathlon uh, history really helped you in that area. Is that true? <laughs> Many hours, patience and determination, mm -hmm. absolutely. Good. I didn't do it all myself, yes. that's well, for sure. It's always, it's always about team, isn't it? Yes, it's yes it is. It's always about team. Yeah. Commissioner Pappas, um, there's a new face on the board this year. Um, congratulations on your election. Thank and you. Um, uh, do you know Mr. Bergeron? I don't. You don't. I heard um, that there were a lot of people running. Um, some people I, I knew were not crazy about what I was doing. And I asked, I, I, I thought, I always think change is a good thing. And I had asked about Mr. Bergeron from both sides of the political aisle, Republican, Democrat. I heard nothing but very positive things good. about him. That's good. And I reached out to him, and I wished him the best of luck before the end of the election. I said, no hard feelings. If, you know, whatever happens, I'll, 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 I'll be able to touch base with you and tell you what I've learned on the board. And um, I'm, I'm happy he won. I, I have no... Um, I, I've always liked um, Commissioner Gagnon, but I think the change is not always a bad thing. Right. And I absolutely welcome Commissioner Bergeron. Well, I think you should be uh, thankful because they voters put you back in office because you're apparently doing a great job. Um, there are a lot of changes <coughs> on the board, the Alderman <coughs> board this year. You know, uh, what direction you see the board going, going in, Alderman? Well, the biggest, most obvious one is there's a high probability there'll be a new board president mm -hmm. in January. Now, are you concerned about the recount that's going to be happening Monday for the two wards, or do you feel... I'm always concerned about something like that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's unlikely. There is a, you know, there's a finite chance that, it'll get, that one of them will get overturned. Right. And so I'm, I've been sort of just being patient. Right. It'll be interesting to see how the city go, goes. Do you, um, Mr. Pepper, you have always been <laughs> the lone voice in differing views on, on, on the board. I've attended a few of the board meetings. And are you hopeful that maybe uh, 
with the, with the change in the commissioners here that there uh, may be uh, more support for the minority point of view? I can, I can certainly always hope for that. Um, there was, it, the feeling was a little bit different when the um, late Commissioner Dyer was still there, even though it was often a you know, two to three vote, Commissioner Dyer and I sometimes voted together, sometimes we didn't. Um, but it was a different feeling and I hope that Commissioner Bergeron will go ahead and have, um, just be that third person there. I've, I've heard a lot of concerns that um, the Board of Public Works is too strong of a, of a board, particularly with a very strong mayor in charge of it. Um, so I'm, I'm really hoping that that extra voice will help. And, and I'm hoping that the change for the Board of Aldermen will help. Um, I know one of the, one of the um, recounts is in Ward 3, and it was Mr. Shoneman, um, who I actually um, probably worked harder for his campaign than I did for mine. We don't belong to the same political party. But I, I, I asked him a couple of questions, and, and I think that he's not going to take... He, he is he's going to discuss public business in public, mm -hmm. and he's going to be represented for Ward 3, and I think that that's something that's been drastically lacking in Ward 3, and I am absolutely hope that that stands, and I hope I'd rather be, he's six up right now, so I'd rather be in the position of him being six up than him being six down, so I'm, I'm hoping, I probably will attend the recount, and I hope that Ward 3, I think he'll be a wonderful, wonderful voice for the people in Ward 3. Well, one of the things that connects the, uh, is going to be connecting the uh, Board of Public Works and the Board of Aldermen is the legacy park issue. And uh, if the board um, <clears throat> proceeds to vote to put that in Greeley Park, as uh, Alderman Presley once said, it has to go before the Board of Aldermen. Do you, uh, I'm quite, I'm, there was quite a turnout, you know, at the DPW meeting that even when they talked about it. Do you, um, Alderman Moyad, do you, how do you feel about the legacy park issue? Are you familiar with that? I know. All, I am familiar with it, yes. Yeah, are, you in, are you in favor? Of I'm not in favor of being in, in Greer Park at all. I was at the infrastructure committee. I'm on the infrastructure committee, and I was at that meeting when it was sprung upon us uh, in, the, in the form of completed plans as this is what is going to happen. And S several of us were s surprised that it, that it had gotten to that level of maturity, that the plans and the, had gotten to that level of maturity without prior uh, uh, approval of going in the park. One would think that the plans are not general as opposed to uh, with regards to where the park would be. You, they, they had to... It, if the plans were a general uh, playground, it could have been in Ward 9, which is where I want to have it. It could have been Ward 8, could have been anywhere in the city. That's one thing. But the fact that the plans of the, of the park were specific to that location uh, and forgetting that maybe it was an oversight, forgetting that to put it in that location needed approval mm -hmm. caught us a few of us off guard. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it should be interesting to see what happens. Uh, do you know when is, is it coming up for a vote uh, before the uh, new um, commissioners are sworn in? Well... First off, I've, um, we already voted on it, which I was, it was a 4-1 vote. Mm -hmm. um, not surprised. I, 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 I voted against it. And I, um, December 2nd, the mayor is going to have her discussion regarding Legacy Playground. Um, she was initially going to have the discussion last night at the same time infrastructure was meeting. And um, I know um, all the Moriarty was out of town that night, yep. but someone had given a history of Greeley Park um, that night. So I begged and pleaded and sent emails. And so fortunately, the, the meeting was moved to December 2nd. Um, the mayor's going to, she's going to have her discussion. She will be, even though I, I, I feel very strongly that this issue should be in front of the Board of Aldermen, not in front of anything to do with public works. But as I said, I've been kind of the lone voice. However, I'm very fortunate. Last night there was a Beezer meeting, which a lot of the people, it's a contaminated land near the park, which part of the park is contaminated by the Beezer site. And Mrs. Murphy, 
a, a local neighbor who's a historian had done it. She's very colorful. She's got a very heavy, a heavy Irish brogue. She's a delightful lady. Um, but she had her presentation in front of the um, infrastructure committee meeting. So I, you know, I, you know, as I said, I sent emails. I, um, and we were able to switch it. So the mayor's discussion about the legacy playground will be December second, Monday. Might be news to you. Um, and I've, that's I've, I've got a few of the emails. It's it's okay. It's the third third. I know Alderman Dodge has emailed. Uh, I'm on his list, and he emailed. I, <coughs> I signed up to be notified when that was, and he told me he was going to try to move it yeah. on the 18th. So right, and and you know, it is is someone who represents the whole city who. Not yet. Warrior, well, once, once, <laughs> once well, I, I do Warrior. represent the whole city. I have that voting authority, certainly. Right. But I'm, I'm biased towards Ward 9, <laughs> currently no, by no, charter. But. Correct. <laughs> but right, right now, there are supposed to be three sites that are available. And um, Cleveland Street, which is the Labine Park, not Labine at Social. Right. That's an area that's really underserved by the city. Sargent's Park, I think, would be great as a resident of Ward 3, but it's, is, is it? is a public official who's serving the city at large. I would like to be able to hit um, all wards that aren't served, whether, it, whether it's your former ward, well, it's obviously your ward now, yeah. or whether it's it Cleveland Street. Mm -hmm. I think that people that underserved by the parks, that's where we should be putting this stuff. Well, we had, we had talked about that some time ago, and you had brought it up, and of course it got shut down, the idea of it was a long time Same ago. You said, "Hey, park. Dan, there's this park that we were thinking of putting up," and and I go, "A playground." I, and I go, "I would love to have it in Ward Nine because there's St. Andrew's Park that's been left uh, unmaintained for a long time." And I had all, uh, several ideas. One of them, I circulated around the neighborhood, and and there were a couple people that weren't too, they didn't like my idea, so I dropped it. And this sounded perfect. We have a lot of acreage down there, surprisingly. It is. And that didn't make it on the. It, 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 it didn't, it didn't, didn't make it pass, on the list. Yeah. It, was no, one it, of the top, it was not one of the top three. It was not one of the top, top selections. Three, uh, yeah. No, no it, no, it wasn't. But it, it, I, I, I really feel like um, the other two parks are really not being considered. I feel like it other was just locations. going through the most. Correct. Yeah. The other two locations, it's almost like going through the motions. And, you know, Sargent's Park, it would be great. The reason, I mean, I certainly would embrace it. But we have money set aside to fix that up. And I just think that in Cleveland Street, that, that, that's a ward that's really underserved. Mm -hmm. And I would embrace it. They want a location. Greeley Park is already a, a, a location. And I, I would really like to see it in an area that needs, that really is underserved by our park and rec. There appears to be a bit of a uh, mix I don't know what the proper term here, confusion on the issues. Uh, whether the idea of having a park, I mean, a playground of this type is a great idea. Absolutely. And, and of course, I'm going partly from what I'd read in uh, the, the meeting that I missed yesterday because I was in Maryland on business. Uh, but the, the proponents of the playground, most of the comments that, were, that had been stated are all valid and are completely intact, even if the location is somewhere else. It still has all the, va the validity of that right. type of a playground, right. the people who volunteered all the time, the right. people who went through that, 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 that leadership program, that all makes sense. It doesn't have to be in Greeley Park for all that right. to come to fruition. Uh, Plus, there's no cost to the taxpayers. There's still no cost to the taxpayers, right. no matter so where it is. It is right all, the, all the benefits that have been highlighted for the playground are all all maintained, can all be uh, uh, realized, even if it's somewhere else. But it, 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 the, the one thing I would like to, um, th th to add to um, uh, Alderman Large uh, Elect Moriarty's statement <laughs> is um, you, 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 pay, you pay attention to the bottom line, OK? So we have a playground at Greeley Park. My kids, my, my, my youngest is three, my oldest, I'm sorry, six, my oldest is 15. That playground was fine. So if we indeed do this legacy playground at Greeley Park, they're proposing to rip out the current playground 
which I consider an antique playground, it's a perfectly serviceable playground. And it doesn't make economic sense to me to rip out a serviceable, but I, I, I sense that it wouldn't, you know, you, you kind of pay attention to the numbers. Yeah. To rip out a serviceable playground and place it somewhere else rather than to place it in a place that does not currently have a playground. Yeah. It doesn't, that You'd doesn't end up having two playgrounds when you're done instead of one. Well, no, they're, no they, they would. They, they no, would what I'm saying is if they, if they just put the legacy oh, somewhere I, else, oh, right. then you leave the one that's there. Then right you there. leave the serviceable that's for, playground. That comes for exactly. free. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and I will say that I appreciate all the fundraising that that yeah. legacy group did. I just, I, I don't want to. Yeah. Question, <clears throat> do you feel, I, many, many years ago, I know that the Board of Public Works reported directly to the Board of Aldermen. Um, do you envision that ever happening again? <laughs> It'd be a major charter change. It would be. It, it makes sense to me that the Board of Public Works is, I've actually read the charter. And it, it's an interesting document. Uh, it's hard to tell whether it was written in whatever the 1700s or the 1800s, whether it's written more modern, the language changes. But the, the, because the mayor is the chief executive <coughs> and needs to have the, the machinery of government happen quickly, it makes sense that the mayor is by charter, the charter, uh, the chairman of the Board of Public Works, and the Board of Public Works is an autonomous organization that can do what it needs to do to get things going. Um, that, that totally makes sense. I, I get that. But uh, it also makes sense that the Finance Committee on the Board of Aldermen is the means by which the Board of Aldermen has to provide a balance or a check, actually on the Board of Public Works so that they, right. when they, if they want to do something, if it's not in the budget, line item or needs contract has to go through the Finance Committee. Right. That's the opportunity for the Board of Aldermen to say, we need more information or we're not going to write the check. Has that right. been happening on a no. regular basis? Uh. <laughs> I knew the answer to that question. Well, I just thought I would I'll ask paraphrase that. David Dean by saying, not one single <laughs> item has come through in the past two years that has been rejected right. on the current the, Finance right. Committee. Right. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's my sense is anything over $10,000 is supposed to go through the finance committee, finance committee yeah. which it certainly should. And I, I was I was talking to people. It's very interesting that you say, you know, about the mayor as the chief executive. And um, I had someone who I respect their opinion an awful lot, who knows a lot about government. They said, you know, if someone on the board of aldermen was really smart, they would come up with a charter change. I am looking at you. Right. <laughs> um, you don't need a charge. That, that, that perhaps, <laughs> that rather than have the mayor be the chair, that we add an extra individual. And have it be like a liaison she is like to the board of aldermen. To have an extra, an extra individual mm -hmm. who is a commissioner. So rather than four commissioner, five commissioners. And the board themselves, like Electric. the board of aldermen, they elect their chair. Right. And I, so I thought that was a really interesting idea. So the mayor would be an attendee similar to a liaison. Right. But in a charter change could allow another commissioner. And then the commissioners themselves like would come up with a, with, with a chair. It could. S similar it, it could. to right. the new ground here. <laughs> still, know? but in, in, I still in my, principle. Uh, things wor would work best if it is as the way it is, and and everything. Um, it's only when that when power can be abused that you that we think of ways to check the the, the abuse of the power, or the perception that power abuse. Then we we, we want to do that, but if if under normal operation when everybody's just cruising along and turning the wheels and getting things done. It's set up nicely. So rather than change the charter to correct an, a perceived problem, why not just elect new aldermen and new, <laughs> new well, commissioners right. like we did? No, no, correct. And the problem goes away. But, but if you do have what we currently have, it's essentially impossible to correct what we have at the Board of Public Works. Right. It's, it's, it's a difficult. That's, Difficult situation present. And now we'll see how three to two happens. goes. But, and but you know, things change, and two years is not that far away. Yeah, so you yeah, may end yeah. up with a mayor who's just as like a benevolent whatever and does nothing but 
That's right. You know, makes the sky shine even during the middle right. of a rainstorm. And well, segue, like to... segue <laughs> into a per perfect statement there um, about being the chairman of the uh, Board of Public Works. If you were um, nominated, would you accept the position of president of the board of Ottoman? Um, of to course, you? but that's not going to happen. Okay. No. Um, it's like, hey, would you like to, if I give you 100 bucks, are you going to take it? Uh, of course you would. But the reality is um, we need to, we have, th there, the goal isn't just to get eight votes to, board, to have a new board president. That, that is a goal for some people. And I would support that goal. It would be great if we had 10 votes or even 12 votes for the board president. Because then that really shows a little more unity yes. moving forward. Mm -hmm. And the, the, there are more people on that board who know David Dean very well. There are a lot, let's say, not more, let's just say a lot of people on that board know David, David Dean very well to the point where they, they trust him. So trust is something that you, you earn over a long period of time. Right. And David Dean has that, earned that trust. I have only been on the board for two years. So I think in, in, in with regards to immediately having the, the, the command, the, the authority or respect of, of his peers, David Dean is the guy, way to go. Okay. Oh. Anything else you'd like to add? Uh, go I, ahead, yes. I, 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 I would, and, and I think it's interesting. Um, my phone was ringing off the hook after the last Board of Aldermen meeting um, regarding the police contract. Um, there were people who were disgusted. They were not disgusted with Alderman Moriarty's vote because he, the last, the first time the contract was up, he right. voted against it for whatever reason. There yeah. are people that thought, compared to the other contracts, the police was less generous, but regardless, no one ever doubted why you voted how you voted that you looked at it and that was that right. was your gut reaction. And well a, he was, analysis has was a gut reaction, but he, I, I understand what you're he saying. He was the only individual <clears throat> who voted against it. Two weeks ago. Correct. And then several people flipped their vote. Now I and I, I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna go out on a limb. The mayor likes to call people over the phone. I have, I sent an email, I don't want to be called over the phone, public business should be done in public. Several people flipped their votes. They're not unintelligent people. I think they did it because their arms were twisted. And people were very disgusted over that. The only individual they weren't disgusted with over the vote was was with uh, well, that's Alderman good to hear. <laughs> be because be you, you know it was consistent at least. Yeah, it was consistency, and, 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 and I and, and I, I do. I think a lot of re people respect the fact that they don't think you're going to get a phone call and flip your vote. Right. And and I think that was, and, and I think that that's going to get the drum beat. We need a new president. Mm -hmm. And David Dean was the top vote getter. Respect from both sides of the aisle. Yes. There, yeah. I have heard nothing but respect for David yeah. Dean. Yeah. And, and I, I think that the city will be in very good hands if he, and I, I believe he will be the next board president. Yeah, it's a good chance. What do you, what are the major uh, topics coming up before the uh, Board of Autumn next year? Um, it, it's, it's always the same stuff. It's parking, okay. parking okay. And, <laughs> and parking meters. Let me tell you, there's, there, we've, there's the, we talked about this Tuesday, and there were a lot of people that were complaining about the parking meters on Quincy Street. Yes. Yep. And uh, campaigning, let me tell you, no one likes those parking meters. Uh, I, I, I listened to some of the people on the Downtown Improvements Committee, and in particular, uh, Sai Mafuz, and uh, I think he's on the committee, and, and uh, uh, John Kutsis, who had a persuasive reason for why we want parking meters on Main Street, and I can understand the analysis. As an engineer, I can I can put aside the, you know, I hate meters, to see what the purpose of it is on Main Street. That type of thing I can buy into, but the fact that they're on on Quincy Street makes no sense. So, but the the perception goes a long way. 
as far as the economy and Main Street and people going down the Main Street and not going, whether or not it's the, 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 the anyway, that's a topic that will probably get revised. Okay. Well, and, I think that was, that was, <laughs> I, I will say I got a love letter today from the city of Nashua, <laughs> and my tax bill went up about four hundred dollars, and <clears throat> I got calls from people. There was no rhyme or reason. A woman up the street. $300 her tax bill went down. Someone who lives near the landfill, her assessment went down $11,000 and her tax bill went up 200 something. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, that, that, that these numbers guys, including hopefully Mr. Shodem and, and uh, Alderman Moriarty here, there seems to be no rhyme to reason that doesn't make sense to me. That if nothing's being done to people's properties and there's such a discrepancy. I'm sure that's something yeah. that will be. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you'll be hearing about officially it. Officially, not in my my authority, <laughs> yeah. but I'll 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 run it down and find well, out who's well, the person well, no, in charge. No, no, yeah. but every time people vote on things, that increase the tax. Now rate. the spending's a different thing. Yeah. It, well, well, spending has stuff, that has a, that, 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 that yeah. has an impact on taxes. It absolutely does. You have to pay for it. Some industry is going to reduce the tax rate. Right. I don't think the parking meters on Quincy Street is going to reduce the tax rate, so. No. But, but anyway, exactly. listen, I think our time is up. I just want to thank you both for taking the time out of your busy schedules, and I'm sure you have a little jet lag there, but uh, yeah. I appreciate you coming and taking some time and letting the citizens of Nashua know how you feel, and uh, we'll, hopefully we'll have you back in, in the future. <laughs> thank okay. you very right. much, Mr. Thank Broderick. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> it's Michael. <laughs>